Hi, and welcome to this FHNW Centrum Schreiben tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll focus on the strength of evidence and its validity. By the end of this tutorial, you should understand what criteria should be met by the literature you use in research and understand how to assess whether these criteria are met. In part one, we discussed how recent publications should be and how to assess their trustworthiness. In this video, we will focus on how to assess how well supported the claims in the literature are and how to assess their validity. There are four main aspects you should consider when assessing the level of support for the claims made in literature. The first aspect is whether the evidence is representative or significant. Testing the entire population is expensive, time-consuming, and logistically impossible. So researchers tend to aim for representative samples, samples that consider the potential variety within the relevant group. But the relevant group first needs to be specifically identified. For example, first-year students of international management at Swiss Universities of Applied Science. And this representative sample needs to contain the range and diversity of the entire population. Statistical significance, on the other hand, has to do with the likelihood that your results are due to chance or not. To be statistically significant, there has to be very little chance that the results are due to coincidence. Scientifically speaking, 0.05%. And generally speaking, the smaller the sample size, the greater the chances are that the results are due to chance. The next aspect I'd like to discuss is whether or not other explanations are possible. It's the author's job to provide enough evidence to arrive at the conclusion they are proposing. However, as a critical reader, you want to weigh their evidence against other evidence you're aware of and assess the strength of their claims in relation to other evidence you've already seen and consider whether there are any other possibilities. For example, if the study had been done differently, or if the evidence had been looked at from a different perspective, or if additional variables had been controlled, would the results be the same? If so, this is not necessarily problematic, but it is something that you should note and include in your literature review. The third thing we'd like to look at is whether or not all the variables are controlled. Say, for example, we want to test the effectiveness of miracle Grow on parsley. So you give one group of parsley miracle Grow, but not to another. Both groups are given the same amount of water, so we can rule that out as a factor. However, what about sunlight? Could a difference in the sunlight have affected the results? When assessing literature, you should consider and potentially comment on whether potentially influential variables were controlled. In a study, the dependent variables are the ones being tested and measured, such as brand awareness, brand image, perceived quality, or brand loyalty. The independent variables, such as the ones in the marketing mix, are the ones that are changed or controlled. You want to control and perhaps adjust the independent variables to see if the changes you implement have an effect on the dependent variables. The fourth aspect I'd like to discuss is whether the evidence supports the conclusion. Here, the issue is that the author asserts that people need to better understand how language works. The author also provides two pieces of evidence. People cannot describe their own language, and people cannot remember the rules of their own language. The author then concludes that people should learn a second language. This conclusion is problematic, or the evidence is problematic, because the author fails to establish how learning a second language will help people remember the rules of their first language, or how learning a second language will improve one's understanding of how language works. While all the points may be true on an individual level, no evidence is provided for why one should learn a second language, or how that will improve one's understanding of language. The research by blogs may be great, but is not directly valid in this case. Once you have critically assessed their evidence, you should think about how relevant it is to your specific interest or focus. Validity has to do with how accurately the findings truly represent the phenomenon you're discussing. Have they considered the same demographic group that you're interested in? Or might differences in culture, age, gender, socioeconomic status between their sample and yours lead to different results? Could the sample size lead to different results? 
What about the method or methodological approach? Small differences in these things may result in big differences, and it's important to be aware of and take note of what specifically was tested, how it was tested, and how this leads to different conclusions. Each study can only test a small corner of our culture or of the business world. It's our job as students and practitioners to be aware of the role that methods and samples have on the conclusions we make so that we can make more educated decisions moving forward. When reviewing literature, you are asked to take a critical approach. This means considering the evidence and reasoning that the literature provides, such as whether it's representative or significant, whether alternative explanations are possible, or whether variables were sufficiently controlled, whether the evidence is valid and supports a conclusion. Often the answers to these questions are not black and white, but rather a matter of degree, which is worth discussing in your literature reviews. Thanks for listening. If you have further questions or ideas for future tutorials, please contact us at Centrum Schreiben. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, please don't forget to give us a thumbs up below.